In this video, we will show you how to remove and replace key components in your lift. These components include the control box, the actuator, actuator cable, motor cable, motor assembly, and the gears. Please make sure you have completed the level 1 and level 2 videos before proceeding with this video. To replace the control box, remove the battery, then all of the cables. Remove the torque screw on the top of the control box using the appropriate driver. Slide the control box up and off of the mounting plate. To install the new control box, place it on the mounting plate with the cable ports pointing down. Then slide the box down so that it is secured by the tabs at the end of the mounting plate. Replace the torque screw on the top of the control box and securely connect all of the cables. Test all lift functions with both the touchpad control and the hand control to ensure that the lift operates properly. To replace the actuator, remove the battery and unplug the actuator cable from the control box. Remove the cable from the cable channel along the mast. Loosen the nut at the bottom of the actuator using a wrench and remove the bolt making sure to keep the bushings in place. Then remove the nut at the top of the actuator using a wrench and remove the bolt. Carefully remove the actuator. Install the new actuator, repeating the same steps used to remove the old one. Make sure the bushings on the inside and the outside of the support arm are installed correctly during reassembly. Confirm you have installed all replacement parts and reassembled all components properly. Test all lift functions with both the touchpad control and the hand control to ensure the lift is operating properly. If you need to replace the motor assembly, gears, motor cable, or the tension spring, you will need to disassemble the lift to gain access to these components. To access the motor and the gears, first remove the battery, then unplug all cables from the control box, including the hand control. On the PAL lift, you will need to remove the push bar. This is done by firmly gripping the push bar and pulling it up until it is free from its mounting pegs. Next, remove the seat assembly. Loosen the thumb nut on the bolt that attaches the seat assembly to the arm. Remove the bolt, then remove the seat assembly. Now remove the mast. Use a deep well socket wrench to remove the nuts attaching the mast. Remove the mast assembly and be sure to place it so that the actuator arm does not get damaged. Finally, remove the lift cover. To replace the motor cable, loosen the two screws in the terminal block with a small flat blade screwdriver. Then remove the cable end. Make sure to note the cable routing as this will need to be repeated when installing the new cable. Thread the cable through the lift cover and then follow the original cable routing. Connect the end of the cable to the terminal block, making sure that the red wire from the motor is matched to the brown wire from the cable, and the black wire from the motor is matched to the blue wire from the cable. Then securely tighten the terminal screws. To replace the motor assembly, remove the two mounting screws using a hex bit driver or Allen wrench. Make sure to loosen the screws on the terminal block that secure the motor cord and remove the cord from the block before removing the motor assembly. When removing the motor assembly, make sure to retain the tension spring that fits between the motor assembly plate and the base frame. This spring will need to be reinstalled with the new motor assembly. When replacing the assembly, simply align the holes in the motor assembly mounting plate with the holes in the base and insert the screws and tighten. Next, insert the tension spring onto the tab in the mounting plate and slide the spring over the tension adjustment bolt, which is installed in the base frame. Position the mounting plate so that the teeth of the small gear align with the teeth of the large gear so that the gears engage without binding. Once the tension adjustment bolt is properly adjusted, make sure to tighten the lock nut against the base frame. Tighten the mounting screw only enough so that the mounting plate has 1 16th inch movement allowing the tension spring to align the gears so that they engage without binding. 
To replace the small gear, remove the spring clip on the top of the gear using a small flat blade screwdriver to work the clip off the motor shaft. With the clip removed, pull up on the gear to remove it. Make sure to keep the retaining pin that locks the gear on the motor shaft as it will need to be reused when replacing the gear. If the large gear is damaged, then the hub assembly needs to be replaced. For the PAL and PAL2, the nuts that secure the hub assembly to the frame must be accessed from underneath the frame using a deep well socket. Loosen the nuts and remove the hub assembly. To replace the hub assembly, align the studs with the holes in the frame. Insert the hub assembly and install and securely tighten all of the nuts. Confirm you have installed all replacement parts and reassembled all motor and gear components properly, then replace the cover on the lift. Replace the mast assembly, reattach the seat assembly, and reconnect all of the cables to the control box, making sure they are plugged in securely, and then reinstall the battery. Make sure to test the lift functions after replacing either the motor assembly, motor cable, tension spring, or gears. Using both the touchpad control and the hand control to confirm that the lift is functioning properly after installing any new parts. Congratulations, you've now completed the final video in the PAL troubleshooting series.